Welcome back to New Scope. We'll continue with our great guy in the studio. He's a, he was a former trooper of the Nigerian Army. Today he's a security management consultant. And he's talking to us about, uh, he has practical experience about fighting. So it's good to have you. Thank you very much. Now, let us, go, well, I was talking about the adequacy of our men under arms. What the, the ratio for a country of this magnitude, okay. we have like 400,000 men under arms. Does it begin to be adequate? You see, when disaster strike, the time to prepare has passed. We were not prepared many years ago. We never anticipated that uh, Nigeria would be hit by terrorism. And today, we are doing so well negatively in the hierarchy of terrorism. Negatively? We are, yeah, we're doing so well. We are number three. Uh, the third most well, doing very well negatively. negatively yeah because uh, if you are not doing so well why, what are you doing in that score card like when i was in primary school when i come second third or fourth my father would deal with me and tell me that the ones that are coming first i didn't know your mates you understand so i would go back to the drawing board reevaluate myself and when i come second my father would kill me a chicken so i think when i was in primary school i eat chicken for about six ten for about six straight years i was coming first 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 now that's what we we'll talk about reward and uh, 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 effectiveness. The problem we have here is that uh, the military were not prepared. They never anticipated this war. When this war broke out in 2009, uh, the Nigerian government did not give the military time to evaluate the, uh, the problem. Because if you don't evaluate a problem, if you don't assess the problem, carry out a risk assessment of any problem, you will not know what to project or the necessary mitigation factors that you're supposed to project. But here they hit in the military quickly. At any given time, they will send the military. Imagine NSAS here in Lekito Gate where they're supposed to send LASMA to go and disperse those people. They not even police. They send the military to go and shoot life. Uh, ammunitions and at that very uh, tow gate, which I so, okay, there is a, there, from what you have said, there is a misdeployment, mismanagement, of mi misdeployment, yes, of military assets and personnel. Yes. Now, but uh, speaking to you earlier, you talked about some some problems with deployment. Oh yeah, yeah. So how has this uh, faulty deployment strategy? manifested itself the former chief of army staff uh, 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 the last the passive of army staff uh the name just came Burutai. Head, Burutai. Uh, we were in the front line together in the 90s he was in the bakasi peninsula then he was a major he understands the operation very well he understands that you can't leave a soldier in in the front line more than six months maximum nine months but as i then in the 90s at doyle we were spending just six months in the battlefield and you come back or yes the rotation come back and enjoy your marital benefits those that are married are you telling me that they will not come and enjoy their marital benefits those that their wife just put to bed are you telling me they will not come and see their children growing up but here the same chief of army staff who was a major in the front line in the Bakasi days? He has been to. I was being rotated and, every six months. Yes, he became the chief of army staff and failed because I called, I quoted him last year that you have failed in the aspect of deployment. You are not looking into deployment. You people are looking into. They are just looking at weapons, weapons, sadoy. In, in the they battlefield. They become contractors. Oh, yes. See, people just feel that the best thing you need to do as a country is to get arms and ammunition. Get arms and ammunition. Get hardware. Those are not the priority in the battlefield. The arms and ammunition fire themselves. They, they can't fire themselves. Thank you, sir. That's what I'm trying to say. The soldiers operate these arms. Even if you are bringing technology, human beings are going to operate so this what's, technology. So what's the average um, rotation time that... Uh, Nine soldiers... months is maximum for what, what, you to what, engage. But what, what, what is the reality? Presently, yeah, we have our soldiers spending four years. We have our soldiers spending three years. years. My younger brother Continuously, spent, my yeah, oh sure. My younger brother spent four years and four months in the battlefield. He went into the front line in uh, April in, uh, in 2014, then he came back in 2018. Are you with me? So, if somebody like my younger brother, same father, same mother, spent five, four years, and based on that, uh, uh, the, the fear, the pain the wife was going through, the wife died. In 2018. So what I'm saying here is that we must not leave our soldiers in the battlefield for more than nine months. That is where failure comes to play. And that is why the Boko Haram, they are taking victory against our men because when you don't know when you are going back home, you will not be prepared to fight. Okay, all right. No, no, thank, thank you for, for this. But you, you, if, I, if I recall, your brother also suffered an injury. Yeah, it was in a, a, a gunshot, yeah. So tell us about that. Oh, yeah. In 2014, when the Chibok guests were uh, adopted and they went for reconnaissance to regain the territory, and one evening he was about to have his bath. And uh, while he was about to have the bath, he had a voice. 
that you want to take your bath in the broad daylight because in the military, in the battlefield, you don't have to take your bath by day. If you are taking your bath by day, by, you, are, that means you are putting your life at risk. You must be on alert any time. Sometimes we have soldiers in the front line, they don't take their bath in a week. That is what a soldier is and that is why anybody that sees a soldier in the road must pay him due respect. Now, when he was shot in that 2014, I think uh, he was evacuated about five days later. And that tells you that our military are not coordinated Septic. in their operation. Five yes. Days later. yes, because I kept calling, calling, calling. He said they are still in the bush. A soldier must be evacuated maximum one hour. Where five days. He spent five days with be a bullet. Wounds before it was just bandaged. Before, and was before they were evacuated. So, no. And when they were evacuated, they started treating him. And I was asking him for progress report about the treatment. And one day, I saw the injury was the leg started getting rotten, you know, was defecating and I said, hey guy, you can't remain there like that. Come to Lagos. And I flew him to Lagos. Are you with me? You have to Oh, sure, I have this my brother. I can't put the risk, the life of my brother at risk in the hands of the government. Medical oh, sure, I have to do that. It's my younger brother. Correct me if I'm wrong. After he was well... He has to go back and fight for the... For the, for the, the, for the Nigerian for, army redeployed the military. Him. They redeploy him for another uh, but three years. the Nigerian years. army was not much. responsible for his healing. Oh, no, 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 no. no. But they, they did they, not no. hesitate to redeploy they him. They did not hesitate to redeploy him because uh, uh, I think uh, we have a problem in the army. There's a problem. Uh, because the, when somebody is being shot in the battlefield, I think there should be a compensation to people like that. Because here, our people, our soldiers are being amputated, their legs are being amputated. There's no compensation. Now, when he was shot, I had felt that they were um, uh, compensating. I don't need a compensation because I know he said, no, no. I just wanted my brother to be well and okay. So when he was with me, I said, okay, this is what you're going to do, this is what you're going to do. Because he have a kind of permission to treat his leg then. He got well again, and they were he calling him. He needed their permission for you to treat him. You said what? He needed their permission. No, 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 he didn't need their permission. He didn't need their permission. It's my own brother. I can't put his life I mean, on the line. I mean, he, he, he needed to seek their leave to say, my brother is treating Oh, him. he needed to just tell, seek their leave that uh, I want to go and see my brother and everything. I think he was given a leave and uh, I brought him to Lagos. And immediately and, uh, he was well. I started projecting drugs. And when, he, when he even came, he was smelling ampli cloths and everything. And I was asking, are they not 21st century... Uh, medical doctors in the battlefield that can apply immediate first aid and thereafter take good care of our soldiers. Sometimes you see our soldiers go, get, get wounded, critical situations. They don't carry out triage, just like in the medical lines, there's what called triage. I know. You I prioritize, know. you prioritize the injury immediate, and look at what the immediate is. Something is. But here we see our soldiers, apart from officers, I learned that our soldiers are not even flown abroad okay. for treatment. Now, I am not. It's I'm a worrisome situation. Thankfully, you, you are a trooper, so you, you, you understand battle. I'm a filmmaker, and in filmmaking, we deploy drones okay. to take aerial shots for aerial us, shot. okay. and they give us fantastic images, high-definition definition, images. Yeah. Why is it impossible for the Nigerian military to deploy drones, unmanned, unmanned aircraft with surveillance equipment before they move into a territory? Because we're always getting ambushed. These, I, we, the drones that we deploy in filmmaking, they are drones as cheap as $1,000. They are drones as sophisticated as $30,000. And you can get 100 pieces of it. So why, is it, why do we have... And because especially the battle we're talking about in the north is, is on savannah. Grassland. Plain ground, beautiful field. You, know? the, the, you see, like um, during the time of the militant days in the... Niger Delta, you know, we're finding finding it difficult to go through those terrain because I mean, because it's dense, dense it's forest, dense forest. You understand? So we're finding it difficult to, you know, penetrate even if it's armor tanks or whatever. Even if that aerial surveillance, yeah, yeah, you, you cannot not be able but to here detect. in the northeast, we have a desert where you can see about one thousand meters from here if you have a good sight. Are you with me? And I see no reason why these guys will activate an attack, successfully hit our military target on that attack and take over territories. Yeah, I think that uh, there is compromise somewhere, and I don't think they are ready to end this war. I have been saying it that what is happening in the North is, is a friendly match. I know the Nigerian army. My father was a soldier. My elder brother you was a soldier. soldier. I'm a you're soldier. Brother, brother, brother. Brother. So in the family, we have four soldiers. So when I'm talking, I'm not just talking as a security expert. I left the military at a very young age, understand? Because when I saw the system then, I was demoralized. And that really, was really, I recall when we were speaking earlier, you told us your turning point in 1999. 
when a visiting a, a, chief of Amistad, a chief yeah. of Amistad was yeah. visiting the yeah. troops, and we have to rehearse questions in, in Bakasi. Yeah, we have to we have to rehearse questions. Uh, explain what you mean by yeah, yeah. When, when I say rehearsing question is that you know there is a problem in the army, and I cannot face that problem. That was why I resigned voluntarily. Uh, that problem is that you, you, have, you they will ask you to wait for your time, wait for your turn. Don't talk. Keep quiet. Silence. Has been so eating of our the, soldiers. The chief of army so staff when was he came, troops. Yes, and the commanding officer assembled was a gentleman. Uh, this is what you are going to say. This is what you are going to say. Ask the chief of army staff this. He was giving us questions to ask the chief of army staff. So there was no way the chief of army staff at that time could understand, understand our pain your sentiments and understand our pain. And so he will know what to do. Yes. So so the commanders were telling you what not this, to ask. What not to ask. So this was to expose. And when you over ask any questions, you'll be locked up. Seriously, there was a time we went to the firing squad. I think I was locked up by my commander. Those were the reason why I just said, hey, I can't remain in this system. I asked the question. I said, why is this major always using his stick and hitting us while we are shooting at the firing range? What if I turn my gun and blow off his head? My commander said, are you saying you are going to blow off my major's head? Are you saying you are going to blow? I said, no, I'm asking what if? You don't hit soldiers on their head with sticks while they are engaging uh, the range, during range classifications. You understand? So all those silence, fear, our soldiers are scared to speak. They are so scared. I see a lot of them. But the few who have spoken, even senior officers of get the them arrested. general, have been caught. Just like the last general that came and says that uh, the system is working against us. The general is not lying. He's saying the truth. The military, not, the military needs to be truthful. I kept saying it any day, any time. The best thing, Sadoy, you can do for your country, Nigeria, is to tell the military the truth. Tell the government the truth. Even if they are going to get someone So old. the state of emergency that you're recommending should just focus on on re-engineering the military. Okay. Not the Nigerian states. This threat is coming from the terrorists. If you are shutting down the state, that means you are telling us that you and I, we are going to suffer the more. No. Declare a state of manage, um, emergency in the military and the police. Let us know what the problem is. Reevaluate the police. Reevaluate the military. Carry out an assessment. Vulnerability assessment. Their vulnerability assessment. Let us know what their strength is. What their weakness is. And if you know their weakness, then project factors that will mitigate those weakness so that they will have that strength to engage the enemy when the enemy comes. Huh? Thank you. you have given me a thorough education and I believe by extension uh, that uh, my viewers are also better enlightened about these things. Thank you very much, Dixon. Osaji. Thank you so much for having me. Our Thank you so much too, Sadar. <laughs> our security management consultant and certified protection officer. Yeah, and certified protection professional. Pro professional. Yeah, certified that's the highest protection certification. Protection. US certified. LSD, exactly. It's US certified. Yeah. Certified. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much for being a guest on the show no today. Bless you, sir. There yeah. you have it. We've been speaking with a man who knows what he's talking about, a man who has seen battle and fought in battles and he has said very interesting things. The problem is News Scope with Patrick Doyle. Next week, we promise to be here with another interesting individual and discussing yet another topical issue. Until then, have a wonderful week ahead.